there are many great tips that I have already spoken about, but this time, I want to share some of the worst tips that I could come up with. The last one might upset you. Enjoy! Turning your fruit into jelly is usually an exceptional way to increase its value and get that back. But did you know that you can literally lose money if you do this? If you plant your star fruit or your ancient fruit with deluxe fertilizer and use some farmer's lunch just before you harvest them, you will be able to harvest iridium quality crops. Iridium quality star fruit can sell for 1650 gold without any processing, and iridium ancient fruit can sell for 1200 and 10 gold. If you then turn those iridium quality crops into jelly using a preservation jar and for some wild reason do not have the artisan profession, your star fruit jelly will suffer 1550 gold, meaning you will lose 100 gold on each sale. And ancient fruit jelly will sell for 1150 gold, meaning you will lose 60 gold per sale. The chances of this occurring is highly unlikely, but just in case it does be wary. Do you want to make a moderate amount of money in one of the hardest, most efficient ways possible? Good. All you need to do is head to the casino and gamble until you win big. The bigger, the better. Then trade all of your casino tokens in for farm warp totems. Do not sell these. They only sell for 20 gold. It's just not worth it. Instead, deconstruct these using your very expensive deconstructors to get a single serving of honey. But wait, there is more. Then turn that honey into meat by placing it into a keg. Don't sell the meat, there is more to be done. Now place the meat into some casks in your basement. After one entire season, your meat will be fully aged at rhythm quality and ready for that shipping bin. With the artisan profession, you should make 560 gold per iridium meat. Wow, it's like printing money. Was that way too efficient and want to make even less money with an even worse method? Okay, I gotcha. Get a bunch of fire quartz from the mines. Then place those into crystallariums to duplicate them. They only take a single day to duplicate, so how bad can it be? After you have a bunch of fire quartz duplicated and ready, drop them into some furnaces. After a few in-game hours, these will be processed into 3 refined quartz per fire quartz. Selling those three will net you 150 gold but selling the fire quartz as they are will get you 100 gold so we are making profit however if we take into account the cost of the coal and the time it takes to produce these this really isn't that good do the right thing just duplicate diamonds like a normal person do you need wood? Let's be honest, we all need some wood at some point. But getting a bunch of wood using an axe is tiresome and I'm just not about that. Bombs. Use bombs. You will need to use tons of bombs just to blow up a single tree. But just plant your trees close to each other so you can destroy multiple trees at the same time to save on your bombs. Easy win. Lava eels. Legendary fish. Bloodfish. Do you ever feel that fishing is just overrated? No, me neither. But if you do, you could take advantage of crab pots. Crab pots are kinda meh, but with the right professions, they can be pretty good. At level 5 fishing, you will get the opportunity to pick the trapper profession. This will allow you to craft crab pots at a cheaper cost, which is really important if you want to use these suckers. Then at level 10 fishing, you can pick either the mariner profession that prevents your crab pots from producing junk or the lure master profession that will cause your crab pots to no longer need bait. Personally, I prefer the mariner profession. Pair that with a couple worm bins placed nearby your crab pots and you need not worry about bait. Just collect some free bait in the morning and then collect your fishes while placing bait into the crab pots at the same time. I still prefer fishing with an actual fishing rod because the mini game is fun, but crab pots are are not all that bad, I guess. 
Do you play Stardew Valley with a friend or a significant other? Well, if you do, then this tip is for you. Do not marry your co-op partner. This might sound absolutely horrible, and it is, but marrying your co-op partner will limit you in Stardew Valley. The truth is that if you marry one of the Stardew Valley marriage candidates, you will be able to get a star drop when you get them to 12 hearts. Unfortunately, there is no special prize for marrying someone in co-op, so you will for ever have less maximum energy than you otherwise would. What you could do instead is marry someone, get the star drop and divorce them for your true love. Did you leave your horse somewhere and have no idea where it is? Wow, that is pretty mean. But don't worry, you don't need to look for your horse. There's a special magic trick that you can do to easily get your horse back. Just sleep. Your horse will be back at your stable when you wake up. Are you adventuring through the dangerous skull cavern, slaying countless foe, finding unexplainable treasure, and having a jolly time, but need to get to the Star Drop Saloon before it closes so that you can have a drink with Abby? Well, what are you going to do? Run towards the bus, then run towards the saloon? No, that just seems like a waste of time. You could use a warp totem, but that is a waste of resources. Ah, I got it. Just die on purpose in the skull cavern. That is indeed a very fast way of getting back to the town. Now you can just get that drink with Abby and adventure in the Skull Cavern on the same day. During the extended family key quest, you will be able to catch the legendary fish again. This quest can be a little bit tough as you only have 3 days to catch all of them. But you can also catch them multiple times for maximum profit. The problem is that the legendary fish don't bite that often and you might find yourself catching many regular peasant fish. As soon as a fish bites, if it isn't a legendary fish, just immediately hit the escape key to drop the fish and then cast your line back in. Before you know it, you will get hundreds of legendary fish. Have you heard of Yoba? Yoba is kind of the religious figure in Stardew Valley. You can find some of the townspeople at the Yoba shrine inside of Pierre's store on Sundays. You can also craft a ring of Yoba that will literally protect you from damage with its divine powers. But did you know that you can buy your own little Yoba ornament from Krobus for a very respectable 350 gold? You can place this on your farm and create your own little shrine. But there is one more thing that you can use this shrine for. You can place it on your fish ponds to show how many fish are in it. That seems like a very disrespectful use of this religious piece. But it is what it is. Most people will always go the community center route. Even on their 10th playthrough, they will always go the community center route. And a lot of Stardew Valley players will make sure that you do too. The Jojo route is trash, right? Well, I mean, it's not all that bad to be honest. It's actually much, much easier to complete than the community center. So if you find the community center stressful, just do the Jojo route. All you need to do to complete is make some money. The only downside is that you get slightly less point for grandpa's evaluation and there won't be a community center to visit every now and then. But going the Jojo route won't block any content, so make your pick. So, how were those questionable tips? But let's hear from you. What are some odd questionable tips that you have for Stardew Valley? Bye for now, I will see you in the next video.